Hi there, everybody. It is time to get started, and we appreciate you being on time today. Very nice to see you in our room. This is Craig at Max Trading, here with Chris and Eusebio, and all of us are excited about today's presentation. You are among the first traders to learn about the upgraded Max training courses, so it's a great time to be here and be a part of the Max community and getting ready to add Max methods to your charts, which will give your trading results a very nice boost. It was more than three years ago that Eusebio began to see the need for something to help us to deal with the changing nature of the markets as ranges began to shrink and trading became more difficult. And he began to develop and test the max enhanced trade format indicator. We call it the ETF. It's been in action for about three years now, and we felt the time had come to make it a part of all of our max trading courses. So uh, this is a great opportunity for you as we incorporate ETF into everything we do now. Makes it a really exciting time. You can select any level of max training and you will also get the ETF indicator, the companion indicator that we've added to help us with the bias in a direction. And for you, this will make a huge difference. And more good news, tuition rates are staying the same. Even with the upgrades, there are no price increases at all, and you'll see that a little bit later. By the way, we still think it's very important that whatever trading method you're interested in, you get to see it in real-time action on live charts. So everyone who's in attendance today or who takes time to watch our video playback of this session, all of you will receive an invitation to our next live trading session. Absolutely no cost for that. And in the meantime, there are a number of videos available of live trading, and so you don't really have to wait, and we'll share some of those links with you. As the developer of the ETF, Eusebio is the perfect person to show us more about Max Trading. He's a phenomenal trader, a very skilled teacher, and you'll sense his genuine passion for helping other traders to become successful. So he'll share with us, and then I'll come back and, and get you to help us with some dates and so forth for exact trades to look at so that you know everything's transparent, nothing prepared ahead of time. And then Chris will share with us. So we begin with Eusebio, and thanks, Eusebio, for sharing part of your week with us. The microphone is yours. Thank you very much, Craig, for your introduction. So hello, everyone. I hope you are doing fine. And before starting, let's make a quick audio and video check. Do you see my screen, and do you hear me well? If you would like to type a yes or a why in the question area, I would really appreciate <coughs> Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Waf, Wafana, I hope I, I pronounced correctly. Robert, I see some uh, Max graduates uh, uh, in, in the room. Uh, John, okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> and uh, thanks to all those I have not uh, mentioned. So uh, before just showing you the, the, the Max ETF, let me give you a very, very short, short background who I am. Uh, so uh, my name is Eusebio, Eusebio Nani. I like to be called simply Eusebio. It's a, it's the first name I really appreciate. Um, my first language, as you may have perhaps realized, is not English, so I apologize for my very bad action. Um, and I am a Belgian trader, but I live now uh, in France. I was used to share my life between Belgium and France for many, many years, but I have decided to um, locate definitively in France. So, And um, I am a full-time trader since 2008, uh, and specifically interested uh, in the Forex since 2000. And uh, I have taken uh, the first course uh, with the MAX when Jim uh, was teaching the max. I will uh, mention uh, Jimmy in, in a few moments. And when Jim passed away in 2009, uh, the max team, Craig and Chris, who were the partners of Jim, has, uh, have asked me to, uh, if, if I would accept to, to give uh, the course, which I have accepted with great pleasure. Uh, but I am a past software engineer, in, so I have worked in the IT industry for around uh, 30 years, and the 15 last years of my career has been in the banking industry, 
because I had for many, many years an interest in investing and trading. I have tried almost all the possible markets, not all, but many of them, the stock market, the options market, the futures market, and finally uh, the forex. And so uh, the, the, the acquaintances I have had in the banking industry have given me some uh, some informations about uh, how uh, traders in banks may trade and what their objectives uh, may be, and to see, in fact, different kinds of traders, because not all the traders in a bank are the same type of traders. And so today I'm going to show you what is the max ETF trading. I will explain quickly some of the basic concepts, and I will um, um, illustrate these concepts with some examples. And so let's go uh, to the uh, a small history of the, what the MAX is. And so the MAX has been created many years ago by, uh, as I have mentioned late, uh, Dr. Jim Pruitt, uh, who left us in 2009. It was called Tiger uh, by his students, but it was with a great lot of uh, affection, affection uh, because he had a strong temperament. But a strong temperament because he also know that his time was counted and he wanted to share his knowledge, his experience, with as many students as possible, having the aim to give traders a very powerful, reliable um, trading method. And um, the MAX uh, is based on a few concepts, very few concepts, solid concepts, but many rules and many details. And this is why there are two keys which are very important to become successful with the MAX, work and commitment. It requires a lot of work, a lot of practice to master all the details, all the finesses of the max. And so in order to sustain that effort, which is a real investment uh, in the time life of a trader, a lot of commitment is necessary too. And a commitment higher than simply the commitment to or the objective to make money. Even if making money is the uh, one of the last objectives we have when we trade. But there are also other keys which are important uh, to be successful. Discipline, patience, persistence, concentration, confidence. Discipline and patience because when we consider to take a trade or to close a trade, opening a trade and closing a trade uh, is made or are made depending on specific conditions. And we have several types of conditions I will mention later, and so rules. Each condition represents, a, or each set of conditions represents a rule. And so we have to wait with patience that all the conditions are fulfilled before taking a decision, without never deviating from these rules. And this is made by discipline and patience. And persistence too. Persistence consists in continuing to apply the approach uh, applying the rules um, even after some losing trade. Uh, it is a maze to, to understand that even if you have a high winning rate system, you may still face important uh, losing strikes. For example, even if you have a 70 or 80 percent winning trade, you will face from time to time uh, a series of successive losing trades made of four to ten losing trades in a row. This is not uncommon and this is why persistence is also important and so to sustain these um, losing trades. And this is why the trade the risk management and the money management are so uh, important to, to sustain the <coughs> corresponding drawdown these losing trades will provoke. Concentration also is important because as I have said previously a lot of detail must be taken into account and confidence of course we need to develop confidence not only in the market in its ability to provide day after day uh, enough opportunities but also in the max trading system and also in ourselves um, in our ability to apply the methodology and this is why so confidence must be developed by practicing and um, in order to define a trading method I think that we have several steps to uh, consider. Um, and this is something I don't often see in many trading uh, system description. But for me, it seems obvious that we need to go through these steps. First of all, uh, we need to define what are the movements we want to trade. How do we define a tradable movement? How do we define, for example, 
a trend or a directional movement, I, uh, as I prefer to uh, name them or to define them. And then uh, once we know the kind of movement we want to trade, we need to define how we can pinpoint when and how such a movement may possibly start. And the way a movement may possibly start will be defined through a set of setups. And I will define what a setup is uh, later. And we may have several types of setups. We have to define also when uh, the setups are valid in order to take a trade. And we will have uh, three types of conditions to be fulfilled. A set of technical conditions, a set of risk condition and a set of global context conditions. And only if these three categories of conditions are fulfilled, then we have a trade. And when one of these conditions are no longer respected, then we have to consider the possibility to uh, reduce the size of the trade or to close the trade. And then so we have also to define how to handle the trade along the movement. How can we possibly uh, reduce the risk or cancel the risk until we have a uh, risk-free trade? How can we, while controlling the risk, add to the trade through the mechanism of the scaling process with the max? How must we scale out uh, in order to reduce the position, in order to reduce the risk too? And then we have to define how a trend or a directional movement may exhaust. We never know with certainty when a trend will end, when a trend will uh, reverse, for sure, uh, to another trend in the opposite direction. But at least we may have some uh, indications that a movement we are trading is exhausting, and this will be a good opportunity to close the corresponding trade. And so the MAX, uh, in fact, when uh, it has been defined by uh, Jim, is an acronym which stands for three types of concepts. The first concept is momentum. The M stands for momentum. And we want indeed to see enough momentum, but also enough volatility when we want to consider uh, a trade in the direction of a new trend. And this may be the problem which has led us to define the ETF concept within the max. I will explain in a moment. The A stands for acceleration. How can we add to a trade through our selling uh, technique in order to increase the profit without increasing the risk when we see the trend is unfolding? And the X stands for exit. We need to know, as I have just mentioned, how we uh, may uh, pinpoint or observe the movement is exhausting in such a way to close the trade. And so essentially, so the max is a trend following method. But it is no longer a trend following method as it has been defined originally by uh, Jim, by Dr. Uh, Jim Pruitt. We have generalized the concept of trends by defining uh, another type of movement I call directional movement. And so, but we still keep, of course, all the philosophy of the max and especially all its uh, risk and money management uh, approach or techniques. And the max may be applied to any time frames and to any markets. But it is also important to understand what the max is not. It's not a scalping method. Even if some trades look like a scalp or begin like a scalp, at least we need to open a trade, but we are not interested in closing a trade, catching just a few pips in the shortest period of time. Personally, but it's just my opinion, I consider that scalping is one of the most difficult trading techniques for retail traders. It's, for me, it seems that it's easier to trade a trend, in fact. It takes more time, of course, but it seems for me uh, safer. And uh, it is not a new trading method. We don't try to catch these uh, important spikes. The price in a pair or in several pairs um, is making uh, sometimes when we have an important news release with a big surprise, positive or negative. If you observe carefully such uh, movements, you will see that if you try to open a trade during uh, these spikes, First of all, the price is moving too fast, and so you have a lot of latency in, in your trade executions, and you see also a widening of the spreads, a widening created either by the broker, this may happen, but also by the market maker, by the liquidity provider, essentially a bank's a trader. Uh, many money makers are in banks, uh, in fact. And this is 
due to the fact that there may be perhaps uh, liquidity uh, level problems, uh, low uh, level liquidity, or perhaps uh, they perceive more risk in such uh, context. And this is why they widen uh, the spread. And so the max is not an elementary buy and sell trading uh, system. The rules are flexible to take into account the market conditions. And um, I have already explained that the, the rules of the max uh, uh, define, in fact, three types of conditions in order to consider a trade or to close a trade, the technical aspect, the risk conditions, and the global context. The global context is essentially made of two aspects, the fundamental aspect on a medium to long term, for example, what is the influence of a change in the interest rates of a currency uh, on the corresponding pairs, for example, but also the news release and so consequently the market sentiment depending on the news release but also depending on other events around the world, for example, geopolitical uh, consideration, for example, uh, some political consideration in some countries when we have uh, a government crisis, for example, or a government change. So we may have several aspects uh, in everyday life which may impact in the market and which may change the market sentiment. And so we have to take that also into account. And for me, this is the most important aspect in trading, but the most complex to, uh, to understand and to practice too. But we have to consider it in order to better pick the trade uh, by the max trading system. So, so and the exit techniques are defined um, as risky situations. We use indicators. I will show you some chart where, on which we have technical indicators. We don't trade indicators. We want to, to take decisions based on the price action. The technical indicators we are using are simply some of the tools we are using to go faster to pinpoint some interesting situations, a potential trade opportunity or a potential risky situation for an open trade. We never try to predict what the price may do. We consider that no technical indicator has a predictive power. It's simply indicating what the price is doing now and what the price has made in a recent past. But they can help us to pinpoint important situations when we have to consider to reduce the risk on the position we are handling. And so we have several types of exit techniques. So we have exit techniques based on some indicators, based on pure price action behavior, based on combination of technical indicators and price action, based on timing aspect, and based also on movement in validation or trend or directional movement reversal. So, And so these defines, in fact, situation when we have to take a decision in order to reduce the risk on a trade. And so the reason we have introduced um, in all the max courses the ETF concept is the following. For several years now, I have observed that uh, the, the market conditions um, are changing and these changes in the market uh, produce some challenges uh, when we consider any trading system. And some of them, of these challenges, are the following. Uh, we observe very often poor price action or smaller movement. And when we have smaller movements, this means also smaller momentum, despite the fact that we may have volatility in the market. Um, the volatility can be uh, created because we have uncertainties in the market or because we have other type of behavior in the market. It's clear that for many years now, and with an increasing level of activity, algorithmic trading by the big boys or even more sophisticated approach creates such a higher volatility in the movement and and participate to the decreasing of the price action. Uh, we may sometimes miss nice movement because the price reverses too fast and because, of course, any technical indicator is lagging, that's true, they will not react fast enough uh, for uh, the trading system to catch the trend reversal and so to catch a potential 
trade until unless we consider opening a trade later uh, in a trend. And so with the MAX, uh, in the past, we had two ways to define a movement, a trend, and a counter trend. And sometimes we can see an entire movement which is made partly with a counter trend movement and then followed with a trend movement. And for me, um, I consider that entire movement as a directional movement. And this is the kind of movement we want to trade with the MAX. And by the ETF concept now with the MAX, we have that possibility. And uh, there was another concept also uh, we have introduced uh, at the, uh, even earlier. It is the SAM concept that I will not describe it today, which um, allows to go more um, into the details inside uh, the price movement inside the candle, uh, the candlesticks. So, and so uh, I have ex explained that one of the challenges we have is an observation that for several years we have seen a decrease in the momentum, and the best way to illustrate it is by showing this kind of chart. Uh, I took two examples. For example, here the euro US dollar and the pound US dollar, and this chart shows uh, shows the uh, the daily the, the average daily range on several years, since 2010. And we can see that globally we have a decreasing uh, average daily range. And sometimes the level is very low, uh, even below 50 pips per day on average. And of course we can see a, a cyclical feature. And it's the same thing on on other pair, for example, the pound US dollar. And when we have some peaks uh, showing an increase in the average daily range or in the volatility, because the average daily range is a combination of both, uh, we know that uh, these kind of peaks will never uh, last too uh, long time. And so we have from time to time an important drop in the momentum. And this is true also with other pairs. Uh, I have shown two major pairs, but it's true also with other cross currency. For example, here we have the Euro uh, New Zealand dollar, and here we have the pound yen. For example, we observe exactly the same type of behavior. And of course, when we have average daily range which are very small, then it becomes more difficult to trade with a trend following system, even if globally the movements are still very interesting to trade. And so this is why in order to overcome all the difficulties in the change of the market conditions or the evolutions of the market conditions, we have introduced the MAX ETF concept. And now by that new concept uh, with the MAX we are able to whatever the level of the max we are using, and I will show you today the max primer and the max standard, we are able to trade larger movement, uh, we are to take more movement, many more movement, and we no longer have to be preoccupied by the direction, uh, or if we are trading a trend or a counter trend movement, we are simply trading directional momentum movement. Just to give you an idea what uh, you can expect with that new uh, approach, let me show you some examples here. Uh, this is an example of a recent uh, movement on the Euro uh, Kiwi, for example, uh, in the five minute time frame. And this is an example of a movement handled with the max uh, ETF primer versus the max primer. And so the max primer decisions are shown in white notations, and the max ETF primer decisions are shown in yellow notations. And so uh, let's consider the max primer. Here we have an entry setup. We have a name for each of our setup, which remind the, the kind of behavior the price is exhibiting at that moment, and which represent a set of technical conditions to define the entry setup. But as I have said, we have to add also the risk aspect, and the setup must be in agreement with the global context. Let's suppose that we have that. So we open a trade here, and whenever we open a trade, of course, we fix a stop loss. We have rules to fix the stop loss. And we define the size of the trade with our position sizing concept. But we consider that the trade is made of two units in order later in the movement, when the conditions are appropriate, like in this area, 
to close one unit. So we close half of the trade. And closing one unit is called a minor or a momentum exit, MX in abbreviation. And so in this case, we have closed one unit catching 43 pips on that unit. And we keep one open unit until we have either another exit conditions or a trend reversal. We have the choice to close the trade on the next exit situation or on the trend reversal. And here I have shown uh, the, the option of closing the trade on the next exit technique and we close the second unit here and the close of the entire trade is called an XXX. We close, in fact, all the remaining open units. This second unit has caught a profit of 45 pips and we can see that that movement, that down movement has given with the max primer a, a good trade, a short trade in the direction of the movement, by the way, with an 88 pips profit representing a 1.76R profit at the rework to risk ratio. With the max ETF primer, because we consider a movement in a more general way, we define differently the conditions to uh, pinpoint the beginning of a movement. We are able to define an entry way earlier here. And you can observe that this entry is closer than the previous one relatively to the top here of the movement when the, the movement has resumed the larger term downtrend. We have the same first exit, we have the same XXX, and so uh, we have basically the same conditions except an earlier entry. But we have another advantage, because we are able to catch the movement earlier uh, relatively to the trend reversal, we may use also a smaller stop loss. And so catching a larger movement and using a smaller stop loss makes the reward to risk ratio larger here we have a reward to risk ratio of 2.79 R instead of 1.76 R. So we have not doubled the reward to risk ratio, but we have increased it by two thirds approximately, which is a huge increase. But there is not only uh, that increase in the reward to risk ratio, on the rest of the movement, the rest of the movement was not tradable with the max primer, but it was tradable with the max ETF primer, enabling us to catch a second trade here uh, with the same technique, an entry setup. We close one unit, we close the second unit, and so we catch a second trade. And you can see that now the total result of the trade along that directional movement is now almost the double of the result of the max primer. And this illustrates the benefits we have with the max ETF. This is for the primer. For the standard level, when we include the scaling techniques we have, we have exactly the same type of observation. So in white notations, I indicate in this example the decisions made with the max standard, and in yellow, the decision made with the max ETF standard. And so you recognize for the max standard the same entry as the max primer, and for the max ETF standard here, you can recognize the same entry as the max ETF primer. But now we have something different. We may along the movement either for the max standard or the max ETF standard make scale in and scale out. Whenever we have a possibility, for example here with the max standard, we have the possibility to add to the trade and we call it a scale in an SC. We add two units to our trade. And on some point when we recognize, when we pinpoint that the risk is big enough to reduce the risk on the trade, we close one unit. And so very often, the scalings and the MX of the max standard and the max ETF standard will coincide, but not always. You can see here a coincidence of the scaling number two with the two approach. But let's figure out the decision of the max standard. We have an initial entry, an MX on that point. First of all, an, a scaling, then an MX, another scaling, the MX at this point, another uh, MX on this point, a scaling, an MX, a last MX, and then the final XXX. And you can see the, the XXX, the final close, we have closed three units here, is not far from the bottom of the movement. We do not try to catch the highest high and the lowest low of the bottom, but we will be very close to them. And this max standard trade corresponds to a larger movement than the max primer. And so we increase the profit for the scaling technique and you can see here the kind of result 4.68 r to be compared with the 1.76 r of the max primer 
but with the max ETF standard, because we have been able to open the trade earlier and to make possibly one additional scaling. We have three scalings with the max standard, four scalings with the max ETF, and we have pretty much the same number of uh, MX. So we are able to increase, importantly, the road to risk ratio and uh, with the benefits of a smaller stop loss. And you can see here the road to risk ratio is almost a double of the max under a 9 and 8.74 R. This means that with a risk of 2% for the trade, for example, this trade, this movement, which has lasted just a few hours during a day, has increased the trading account by 17%, uh, so two times, 2% two times 8.74. For. This is the, 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 the meaning of the R notation. The R represents the risk we take under the, it may be 1%, it may be 2%. It's whatever the risk you want to associate to the trade, and it's the percentage of the trading account, provided you use, of course, a wise um, risk per trade. And so <clears throat> this uh, time frame uh, is the five minute time frame. Okay? It, it was the five minute time frame. Um, Another example, so here with the, uh, sorry, I went on the same uh, page here. <coughs> Let's come back. So I have mentioned, so the ETF concept, and so the two lines in yellow and the orange um, are the ETF lines, but Craig has mentioned the companion indicator. And the companion indicator is what you see here. I'm going to show only to go a little faster but with the max standard. And so let me describe uh, the indicator we have on the chart. So the ETF lines, in fact, represent movement with some kind of regularity in the trend. But of course, uh, they can show pullbacks when the price is pulling back, but they filter nicely the noise we may have in the price movement. Look here, for example, during that nice down movement, despite the fact that we have some small pullbacks, these two lines remain perfectly separated and uh, very well regular. But it's not enough, of course, to catch the entire movement here. Um, and. Uh, one of the difficulties uh, some uh, traders have is to have the courage to stay in a trend as much as possible, even with indicators which are very regular, like the ETF lines, for example. And this is the reason why we have developed also the companion indicator, which is here. It is made of two lines, a green line and a red line. We have even um, the last version uh, we have uh, on this indicator, we have made a small change when we can change the color when the, the indicator is upward or downward in, in order to better pinpoint when um, the indicator is reversing. And so we have what we call with that red line a, a fast bias, directional bias, and the green line represents a slow bias or a long-term bias. We have a short-term and a long-term bias, so a fast bias and a slow bias. And the trend, in fact, or the directional movement is indicated by the combination of these two lines, mainly by the slow bias. And so, for example, in this uh, trade, in this example, it is another example than previous, but it doesn't matter. We have here a change in the short, in the, sorry, the slow bias indicator in this area, okay, in this, and so the trade, the trend has been uh, reversed in this area, but I show a, a trade we have taken here out of the Tokyo Open, it was uh, the Euro Kiwi pair in this example, and so it makes sense to open a trade after the Tokyo Open, for example, because before the Tokyo Open, we have a period called the dead period. And so when we open the trade, we see that the bias is downward, and we can stay in the entire movement with the help of the slow bias indicators until we have the combination of these two indicators with their relative behavior, showing us that at this point here, not necessarily here, but at this point, and there are rules for that, we have a potential trend reversal. And when we have a potential trend reversal, we wait for an entry setup in the 
the opposite direction to close the trade. This is why we have closed the trade on this point. And so we have been able to stay in the trade during the entire movement uh, in such a way to uh, exploit that movement as much as possible. So the bias indicators tell us that even if the price is making some pullbacks and sometimes deep pullback, that the bias is still in the favor of the trade we have taken. And when we have a pullback, with the rules we have been pointing us when we have a risk in the trade, we make some scale out. And when the trend resumes, we may we can make some scale ins. So so this is a companion indicator which must be used in combination with the ETF lines. Uh, of course, I have shown uh, examples here in the five minute time frame, but it worked perfectly well also with the max, uh, with the higher time frame. And this is an example in the daily time frame. For example, here it's a uh, movement, an up movement with uh, the max primer and the max standard to without the ETF concept with the max primer and the max standard because we make the distinction between a counter trend and a trend movement uh, as they are defined by the max, we were able only to trade that small portion of the movement with one entry here, one exit, and the final exit here. But the entire movement was this one. And not only we have been able to catch a small portion of the entire movement, but we had also, unfortunately because of that long blue bar, a long, a large stop loss. With the ETF lines and with the companion indicator, so using the ETF concept and using a different definition of the directional movement, now on the contrary, we have been able to open a trade right on this point, not too far away from the lowest low, because of our bias indicator, which was setting in this area exactly that the trend, which was a downtrend, is reversing. And then you can see that despite some pullbacks like this one, this was a deeper pullback, and then here we have another pullback around our long-term indicator or moving average, the bias is still upward until this point when we are able to say, okay, now we have the possibility for the trend to reverse, and we have been able so to catch the movement from that point here to that point here. And you can see the kind of result, the max ETF primer and the max standard primer uh, have produced on this example of a daily time frame with another pair, by uh, the way. And so we can catch way, way larger movement and with uh, excellent reward to risk ratio and that every day or every period depending on the time frame we are using. So. And of course, we don't have a 1% uh, winning rate. Of course, we have losing trades. But the feature of the trade risk management of the, of the, of the MAX, and this is a very important point uh, in our MAX methodology, is that whenever we have a losing trade, and a typical example is this one, at this point we had a favorable conditions to open a short trade. And immediately after the price, reversed uh, and making a losing trade and following the rules, following our exit rules, we have been able to close the trade in two steps. First of all, an MX and then the XXX with a loss, which is a small loss in terms of we work to risk ratio, 0 0.46 R. I have, um, I have had not the time, I'm sorry for that, to um, make the type of correction here. So the reward to risk ratio is minus 0 0.46 R, so a little, a little less than half hour. You can see that with uh, the trade size minus 22 pips compared to the stop loss size. Remember when we calculate a reward to risk ratio and when we use a multi units approach, we have to divide the total result by the number of units we have, so here two, and then the average result we can divide by the stop loss size in order to get the real reward to risk ratio. And uh, I have said that uh, with the max, we have also to take into consideration the market conditions. Our entry techniques will depend also on the market conditions. And so we have defined several types of price modes or market conditions, we have, uh, we are able to recognize very quickly 
uh, what we call uh, local mode, local price mode, so the trend mode, the counter trend mode, the consolidation zone mode, or the ranging mode. And then we have a more global uh, price mode or market condition we call a choppy mode or uh, a choppy market. And this is a typical example of a choppy market. We explain in our different courses how to recognize a choppy market and we have so to adjust our trading approach accordingly. When we have a choppy market, first of all, we have many, many less uh, or fewer uh, entry setups. But when we have one, and if the trade is a valid trade, we have to, to handle the trade in a very, very cautious way. Because by definition, if the price is in a choppy mode, whenever we see the price making, for example, such an up push, it can retrace very quickly and erase completely the previous movement. You can see again here, a push to the upside and then a fast reversal erasing completely the previous up movement. And so when we are in such a condition, we have to trade way more carefully. Well, <clears throat> so in terms of money management, so I will not describe that uh, too much because you, you know the concept. The concept is uh, if you are able to gain some consistency in your trading process, uh, then the profits will, will come uh, by themselves in a very regular way. Uh, just to give you an idea on how you can grow an account if you are consistent in the way to apply a trading methodology, in this example I show, and I will go rather quickly for this, if you start with a trading capital of let's say $10,000 $10,000 and your objective is to double your account and you want to know how much time it will require if you day trade and so in order to give an idea we need to make some assumptions and so we have to define what is the risk this means the percentage of the trading account we apply to each trade and you need we need to have an idea of the result we can get at the end of the day and let's suppose that we will get Simply, if we consider here a um, uh, total number of pips of 60 pips with an average stop loss of 30 pips, and remember we have two units per trade, this means an average reward to risk ratio of 1 to 1. Because we need to divide 60 by 2, two units, and then by 30, which is the size of the stop loss. And we will consider also that we never make a withdrawal. So if we are able every day to make on average a one-to-one rework-to-risk ratio, okay? And I don't say this is really easy, but it's possible. And provided you trade every day, then you can see that you can double your account in around two trading months. After two months of trading, your account will grow to 20 thousand dollars of course this is not exactly correct because some days you will make perhaps more profits some other days you, you will not trade some other day you will make less profit some days you will make a loss but this gives you a raw idea of what may be achieved and this should be an intensive in fact to practice enough to get that necessary consistency in applying the trading process to get these results, and sometimes even way, way, way higher. This is a spreadsheet you can receive if you are interested in to make some projections, some simulation of what you can get with some assumptions, the risk per trade, uh, your objective, the result per day in one or within trade, and with or without some withdrawal. The spreadsheet allows you to consider a withdrawal. So with the max, in fact, we have five levels of courses. The max ETF primer, the max ETF light core, the max ETF standard, the max ETF advanced, and the max ETF sum. Chris will mention a few more details in a moment about these five levels of the course. But what we want to propose you today is the max ETF primer and the max ETF standard. So, And so, um, to conclude my presentation here, and before showing you some uh, examples, so with the max, we have uh, a trading methodology which is based on sound concept. During the course, we explain why these concepts uh, work in relationship with the behavior uh, of the big boys in the market. And what we do in our teaching is to focus 
um, not on the indicator. Of course, we have to explain the indicators, of course, but to, to put the importance on the fact that they are simply tools to help us to go faster, to pinpoint some situations, specific situations, and then to observe more carefully the price action before taking a decision to open or to close, or partially or totally. And the, the approach is also uh, complemented with a very strong uh, risk, trade risk management and money management. I like to make the distinction between the trade risk management, which is the way to handle the trade, to re progressively reduce the risk on the trade we are handling over time, and the money management, which is the way we use uh, we're trading account to grow that trading account or to reduce the drawdown when we are facing a drawdown. And by the way, uh, in the Max Advanced course, I teach a specific techniques, an advanced techniques, which allow to have a total control of the drawdown. You can predefine a maximum drawdown, for example, 15%. And if you follow the procedure of the trade risk management and the money management, you will have the guarantee to never have a drawdown larger than 15%. This is what we call the dynamic risk profile. And so the risk aspect is for the first party when we consider trading with the max. So it's never the profit we can make from the trade, but it's always how to reduce the risk, how to control the risk, and progressively so to reduce that risk and to cancel that risk when uh, it is possible. And so we insist on the coaching aspect, possibly the mentorship uh, aspect, the homework. Chris will speak a little more about the, the homework, and so the practice, and the practice through several um, follow-up activities we have with our workshops, with our open house uh, sessions, with our forum, and with our practice sessions we call scrolling parties. Now, before, going, uh, before giving the mic to uh, my friend uh, Chris, I would like to do with you a small experiment, and the experiment is the following. I'm going to show you my meta to the platform, and I uh, will ask uh, Craig, if you are um, there, Craig, to, um, to draw someone who will give me a pair to consider, and then someone else to give a time frame. And I will show the chart of that pair and that time frame. Yes, uh, all set, Eusebio. Let me check the drawing here. Okay, here's where we need your assistance. Rather than choosing uh, trades to examine, we want you to make the choice. I've drawn a few names, so if I call on you, uh, will you please respond in the question area of GoToWebinar on your screen. First, we need a trading date. And the first name is Steve Scott. Steve, would you please give us any date from the past three months, August, September, or October? Steve Scott. And just place that in the question area for us, if you would. Don't be shy to answer. It is just to 7th of November. Okay, not 7th of November. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you, Steve. It was today, by the way. <laughs> That's a tough choice, okay. Uh, well, we said any date, so we'll go with uh, Steve's choice there. And now we need a currency pair, and the name is John Burgess. Hi, John. Nice to see you. Uh, would you give us a pair, John? Whatever you prefer, put it in the question area for us. One pair, the pound yen. Okay, I have the pound yen here. Okay, okay. thank you, John. And finally, uh, we do need a time frame. And the name is Gord, Gord Gibson. Gord, would you give us a time frame, whatever you like? Five minute, daily, four hour, anything that we can get on the chart here? A standard time frame, of course. <laughs> yes. Give you just a few seconds there, Gord. 15 minutes, okay. 15 very minutes. Good. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So the pound yen today on the 15 minute time frame. So this is the pound yen pair. Let's first of all consider the five minute time frame. And here I'm showing a simplified 
version of my uh, template, okay, with uh, our ETF lines, our long-term moving average, an oscillator, which is a stochastic of the RSI, which is uh, just a help to pinpoint some potential exit technique among our exit technique, and then we have our companion indicator. And let's go starting from the Tokyo Open, uh, which is in this area, somewhere in this uh, area. So let's start after that period. And so a first trade was able, the pound yen, it makes sense to consider trading the pound yen with uh, the, the ASEAN session. And I like to show uh, an entry setup with a green vertical line like this one. And with the ETF lines and the companion indicator, we had our entry setup right on this candle. And so the entry would have been somewhere here, depending on our rules and our um, trading styles. And then we have to consider the exit of this trade. And when I observe what is happening on my chart and on my companion indicator, and I like to indicate an exit technique with uh, uh, magenta vertical line, the exit of this trade would have been right here. Not only the exit, but also possibly the open of a short trade. Because with that indicator, companion indicator, we have been able to pinpoint when this new directional movement has started and when it's possibly ending. This does not mean necessarily the a trend reversal. Okay? And then the down, and so this would have been a movement of around here, uh, 19 pips. Not a big movement because it was during the, the ASEAN session. Uh, usually the ASEAN session does not give a lot of movement. And then if the global context is appropriate to trade short. We can take that short trade. I don't know what was the context because I have not traded today. But the companion indeed would has told us that the trend reversal or the resumption of the uptrend would have been in this area. And so all this area would have been a more challenging trade giving for a short trade, but still giving a small winning trade or possibly a break-even trade, not a losing trade, okay? And then, an up trade, uh, sorry, again, a long trade uh, starting. So the trend reversal is given here, and so we have our entry setup right here for the rest of the movement up to this, uh, I have to, to use a magenta vertical line, up to this point, let me see. Here we had a potential reversal, but no entry to the, short side and then here on this candle exactly we had to close the second long trade and then initiate possibly a short trade and this was a movement making another winning trade and then we have the short trade here okay now we are after the london open we are in during the ASEAN, uh, the, the European session, and our um, BIOS indicator told us that we have possibly here a trend reversal to the upside right in this area. And then we have to consider a long trade, so a close of the short trade, and then reversing the trade if the BIOS was uh, the, if the uh, global context was appropriate to take a long trade, but here a nice downtrend, short trade, with a movement of around maximum, uh, how many pips? 50 pips, with possible one or two scaling, and so giving a very, very nice short trade. So up to now, one nice long trade, a winning one, one with a very small profit, or perhaps break even, a second with a small profit, a third trade with a nice profit, and then during the rest of the European session, so here we were at the time when it was still time to take a trade, and it was possible to open a last long trade in this area when we had to read on this candle here. On this candle, so here, oops, in this area. And to close it around, uh, we have several uh, conditions to close a trade, so we are not engaged into the down movement. But anyway, the trend reversal would have been pinpointed here. 
in this area, but we would have exited our trade earlier because of our exit techniques. For example, we would have made an MX in this area, and so closing the second trade, probably the second unit, for example, at break even, because we can recognize here what I have exactly explained a few minutes ago, we are in a choppy mode. So even in a choppy mode, this would have been a winning trade. A small profit, but still a profit. Okay, And then for the rest of the day, usually with a pair like the pound yen during the second half of the US session, generally this is not the best time to trade, but you can see that at some point the trend has reversed to the upside. So uh, on this point, but we don't trade uh, at that moment on this point for another last trade, but I will not count this one. So we, we have had today on the 500 time frame, so one, two, three, four, five opportunities. And among these five opportunities, we have had one, two, three nice winning trade, two small, one small trade, uh, this one, and perhaps one break-even trade, but no losing trade during that day. Of course, I don't say we will never have losing trade. We have losing trade, of course, but when we have losing trade, we have small losses. And on the five-minute time frame, we have generally between two and five trades opportunities per day during the natural sessions of the pair we are considering. So in this case, the ASEAN and the European session for the pound yen. Now let's consider the 15 minute time frame. Let me erase first of all all the objects in this uh, chart. So we have, we can delete uh, these objects, not all of them, uh, up to this point. Delete because we have also other lines on the chart. And let's switch on the 15 minute time frame. And when we switch to the 15 minute time frame, which is the time frame we have asked, I have to change a setting in my long term bias. And I have to take here this time frame. And so this is the day today. Okay. And here, after the Tokyo Open, we can see that the trend has changed on this candle, on this candle, but the entry setup is given on this candle here, because we have to wait the, the appropriate conditions to define when we open the trade, and the trade would have been opened somewhere in this area. We fix our stop loss, and then we would have handled the trade until its reversal in this, somewhere in this area. Let me see, first of all, we have to consider this area, but we have no exit technique here, and then we have the end of the trend reversal in this area with the reversal, the close of the trade and the trade reversal on this area. And so we have been able to catch a nice portion. The total movement between the entry and the final exit is only 14 bit, but we would have been able to make some more decision and catching even a portion of the movement with more than 30 pips. And then a short trade up to that point here when we would have been pointed again the trend reversal in the other side right on this candle here and with a last exit or perhaps an exit earlier it depends where our exit are and indeed this is the trend reversal with a new possibly uh, uptrend a uh, long trend but in this down movement an entry would have been made here, an exit in this area, and a second exit in this area. So we are very close to the real trend reversal to open or to close the trade. This long trade, if it was making sense with the global context, would have been a losing trade, in this case, in the 15 minute time frame. And uh, because we would have been forced to close the trade earlier, and then resuming the uptrend we had the possibility for a short trade, but no real entry setup. And the possibility, but I do not advise to do that after uh, or during the second half of the US session, so the possibility to take a last trade, a long trade, which would have been another winning trade. So I will not count it. So one, two, three trades, two winning trades, and one small loss. And so this is what we can get with the ETF 
uh, bias indicator, the companion indicator of our ETF lines. So the directional bias help us to stay in the trade as much as possible, as long as the trend is uh, unfolding. And so the bias or the companion indicator tell us when the trend um, uh, holds and when the trend possibly reverses. Of course, we have no 100% success rate uh, it's uh, an illusion to believe that but we have we have a very high winning rate in the way to pinpoint a trend reversal now a trend reversal giving a trade does not necessarily mean a big profit because we never know uh, in advance how far the price can move and when we uh, go into the reality of trading we have other uh, concept telling us that if a specific trade for example this one or this one, or even this one, would have been worthwhile to be taken because we have several concepts to, or several aspects to take into consideration. So the technical aspect, of course, but also the risk aspect and also the context aspect. Possibly, this trade would not have been taken, for example. Okay? Well, so this is the example. So I thank you very much who have given me the opportunity to show you um, uh, how the companion indicator would have worked today on the pound yen on the 15 minute time frame based on your choice and uh, for the moment for example if you take the pound yen someone having taking a long trade on this pair can still hold the trade because the bias is still upward okay well so i thank you very much for uh, your participation to this exercise and so my pleasure is to give the mic to my friend chris chris uh, thanks, Eusebio. Can you hear me okay? Over. And, yes, perfect. Ah, oh, good, thanks. Um, I had a minor computer crash, so a uh, bit of a panic in the back scenes here. Um, so, hi, everybody. My name's Chris. I'm based in New, New Zealand. Um, we maxes are spread out all over the world. So, Eusebio, as you know, is in Europe. Craig is in the US, and I'm uh, down in the South Pacific. So, um, <laughs> the sun never sets on the max. Uh, been partnered with the other guys since uh, Jim started things up in about 2007, 2008. So we've been through pretty much all those courses. Um, this is the 56th set of Max courses that we're we're actually running. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so we we really know our stuff. We've got over 1,900 members coming up to 2,000 now uh, since since we started in 2007, 2008. So uh, next slide, please, you save you. So let's just to give you a bit of background that um, uh, we're legit, we've been around for a while. And this is almost like a, uh, what do you call it, a university course with the amount of information and detail in it. Uh, thanks, Eusebio. I've got a bit of lag here on my screen when I see your stuff. So um, uh, one of the really important things about the MAX, the, the training that we do, is that we ask you to do homework. It's not compulsory, but it's really, really worthwhile. And the reason for it is that um, it lets you verify that you actually understand uh, the concepts correctly. So you do the work and then you send it back to us and we check it to make sure that uh, you do actually understand. We don't care if you do the homework or not. It's a lot of work on our side. Uh, but we want to make sure that you do understand. There have been situations where I've been in where um, uh, somebody has said something and I've got the indicators completely around the wrong way. So instead of looking at a, a vertical indicator on a chart, I've been looking at a horizontal line on the chart. So it's really easy to get things messed up and it really helps to have somebody, a third party from the outside to check that you're actually doing things. And when you're trading, it's like you're trading inside a little black box uh, trying to grab things that are going past outside. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. And uh, unless you really know what you're doing or you have a third party feeding back, you don't know if you're doing it correctly or if it was just plain luck. Or, or if you're not getting stuff, you don't know if you're still doing it correctly or if it's just plain bad luck. So we can give you that feedback. Uh, the other thing that the homework does is it makes you an active participant. So uh, by putting rather than just reading a PDF and listening to a video, you actually get to do the work and it just crystallizes the training. It makes it real. It's not no longer a mental exercise. So we take you through from uh, static charts to using uh, the strategy tester, um, a virtual 
live session where you can take your time over things into the demo and uh, eventually when you're uh, competent uh, into the live money side of things. So um, we want to make it absolutely certain that you, you know what you're doing before you get out there and start playing with your money. Okay, and uh, the way we operate is you send your homework into a, a group where everybody else gets to send their homework in as well. So you get to see everybody else's homework and uh, you get to ask questions in there. Uh, the instructors will pull the homework out, grade it and send it back into the group. So rather than just having a one session uh, video where you get to see a bunch of charts with uh, s some nice uh, entries and setups and exits marked on it, you get to see what everybody else is doing as well and you get to see the max operating under different circumstances. And in some of those t conditions, uh, people will bring up situations which haven't been spoken about in the class. And so there's an extra learning opportunity for you from, from looking at other people's homework. So we really uh, encourage you to check out everybody else's homework as well. Thanks, you, Sabia. We'll grab the next chart. Uh, if you have any questions during the course, you're most welcome. If there is something that's really uh, uh, more difficult to explain rather than just writing it out on a in an email, then we'll bring it up in the class itself and go over it uh, live so that you can see what's actually happening on the charts. Um, here's an example of what the homework looks like. On the uh, left-hand side, for those of you who have actually done the homework, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, because there's some maxes in here, um, is an example of what we want. So there'll be uh, a chart just like Eusebio brought up with the um, stop loss and your entry and um, other set up situations so that when we reply back we can say yes uh, you did this correct no this bar needs it's such and such and uh, we essentially we go through the thing bar by bar so there's a couple of illustrations there that don't necessarily apply to that chart that's up there but it just gives you an idea on what's what's up there's no essays that you need to do that's up to us instructors um, but uh, you do need to do the, the charts and what we're doing by having you mark the charts in that particular format is we're teaching you um, a simple way and a very comprehensive way of doing journaling so that later on in the future you're able to go back to your charts. Uh, like a future you can come back, say, a year later and say, uh, I'm not doing very well here, but I was then. What was I doing? And you'll be able to read your charts and understand what's actually happening. And because we use a uh, a standard format for all our chart marking. It means that you can jump on somebody else's chart and understand what they were trying to do as well. Um, some people get really creative with all their charts and it's just a <laughs> interesting to try and understand what they're up to. So having having consistency like this really does help. <clears throat> uh, next chart please, you save you. And so uh, here's an example, of uh, a table we drew up um, with the course comparisons. The courses that we've got on offer today are the primer uh, and the standard, the ETF primer and the ETF standard. We've put ETF in front because, as you said, you said we've now incorporated that. Uh, the, the primer side runs for two weeks only, whereas the standard, our flagship, which has all, all the uh, training in it, has runs for seven weeks. Uh, the difference between the two, because I've run both courses, um, and incidentally, for the coming upcoming ETF course, Eusebio will be teaching the entries, and I'll take over the exit side of things, just so you know. Uh, Eusebio will be doing both both of the sessions in the primer, so just so you know how things are handling out. Um, the standard, because it runs for seven weeks, almost two months, um, gives you a lot more time to uh, understand and try different things out and get feedback on what you're actually doing and to see feedback from what other people's homework is like. So it's it's a lot more comprehensive and you get a much deeper understanding of what's going on. The primer is a profitable method, but it's harder to trade. Um, even though there's less in it, uh, you don't get all the um, uh, details to sort of keep you out of some of the really rough trades because it just takes time to do the training. We don't have, in two sessions. We don't have time to teach you a standard course. Uh, but with the ETF primer, because you only really get to two sessions to one for home, entry homework and one for exit homework, or exit and entry, then um, you don't have as much 
uh, practice with the entries and the exits as a standard person does. So um, when you're left on your own to do it, there, there can be a lot more uh, doubt and it requires a lot more discipline with the primer uh, to trade it, simply because there's less entries. The primer has got um, about half the number of entries that the standard has, uh, in fact even less, and um, means that you're going to be sitting around waiting longer with the primer than you will with the standard for actual entries. So your learning to curve on the primer is slower, it's still steep, but it's slower than the standard. Well, all I'm saying is that if you do take the primer, uh, it is a profitable course, but you do have to really look after yourself. You have to be a lot more disciplined necessarily than the standard. You have to sit on your hands a lot more than the standard. Okay, uh, with the exits in primer, there's only uh, four or so exits. There's over 20 different exits in the standard. And the reason for this is so that you can maximize your profits. When we jump into a, uh, a trade in the standard, and it turns into a trend. Uh, lately it's been difficult, but uh, because of the ranging markets, which is why we brought an ETF. But when you capture the, get into a trend, something like over 30 pips, then you're able to start using the, the profit increasing facility, the scale-ins, the, the permitting techniques. And because of that, you want to get as much out of the trend as possible. And so we have a lot more exit techniques so that you can really pinpoint the ends of the movements. Um, and this is why we can say that we can make 30 to 300% more profit using the standard than you can with the primer. Uh, the primer is just a, is, is a get in, uh, get out safely. There's, there's, like I said, it's profitable and it is safe. We make sure that you, you protect your account as much as possible. When you get into the, the standard and you're in a situation where you're actually adding to your order, when you don't a lot of I've seen other people do this on other courses, and they keep piling it on their 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 entries, or they have really big entries right at the start. This is super dangerous for their account. They might make a good profit at the end, uh, but along the way they're in a negative situation, and if the price comes back and hits their stops, uh, their account can be impacted. So all the money that they've saved up for in order to do trading with is is being nibbled at or just completely blown away. With the max, when you get into a trade and you start scaling in, it's counterintuitively, you actually get into a safer position. And very quickly, you get into a position where you are guaranteed profit, even when the stop loss comes back and uh, when price comes back and hits your stop loss. So it's very, very safe. Um, it's a, a huge bonus. And it makes the trading a lot, uh, a lot less uh, risky and as well, a lot more comfortable. You can get into a trade, you know you're in a risk-free situation, you know you're guaranteed profit, so uh, you can be a lot more relaxed about what you're doing. And when you're relaxed, you, you're able to think more clearly. Okay, so that's what the money management side of things is about. The primer is simple, whereas the standard is, is a lot more enhanced. Uh, there's, it, it's quite simple and natural to do the, the money management, but it is... Uh, particular to the max. Okay, uh, both of them have got homework, as you can see, and once the course is finished, um, well, there's a few bonuses. Uh, both the primer and the standard of uh, Eusebio runs a bonus session afterwards on a weekend, uh, and in that he shows examples of trades, a winning trade, a losing trade, and a break-even trade, and there's videos of previous ones as well. So you get, a, get an idea on how to actually run the max through a trade itself, as if it's ticking through in a live situation. Uh, we have a forum that you're in, be invited to join with this. Uh, well, not that much discussion. <laughs> uh, people tend to ask questions directly in their homework groups, mostly. Uh, but you can put, post your charts there and get feedback from other people. There are also in the forum other indicators for other platforms. We train using MetaTrader. Uh, simply because it's free and there's no charge for the data feed, which makes it easy. We use one particular broker. Uh, we don't necessarily recommend them, um, simply so that everybody else has got exactly the same chart as you do. Um, even on a five-minute chart, when you're comparing two different brokers, the candles can look completely different. Um, you wouldn't think that, but if you do check it out, it's so when we're tra training, we use just one particular broker. 
uh, and we supply all the indicators and the templates. You just drop them into folders and there's, uh, uh, you just apply the template to your chart and you're all set up, so there's no problems that way. Um, the other platforms that are available, um, and unfortunately at the moment, because the bias indicator that Eusebio has uh, uh, just presented is so new, um, we don't have any for NinjaTrader or TradeStation, but we've got all the other indicators for those particular platforms. So, um, at, and if you have another platform that you want your, your the indicators ported to, we're quite happy giving you the source code. Most of our indicators are pretty bog standard. There's nothing really secret with them, uh, apart from uh, maybe one in the standard. It's more about how we use the indicators as opposed to the actual indicators themselves. And also on the weekends, and we've had a really heavy run of it just lately, uh, we have uh, practice sessions. We call them scrolling parties. And uh, under normal circumstances, uh, the primate class would get one or two sessions per month, and the standard would get three or four per month. Uh, so far, it's been, because we've just introduced the ETF we want to make absolutely sure that people understand what's going on with it. So private people have been have this extra session, as well as standard people, uh, pretty much every weekend since we introduced the course about two or three months ago. So <clears throat> the practice sessions uh, pretty much every weekend. Uh, the people that are higher up in the max classes uh, get to see all the sessions. The lower end ones only get them frequently, as, as you can understand. Uh, the practice sessions run for between two and, if we're really enthusiastic about stuff, about four hours, and you get to ask whatever question you want. You put your charts in, we can walk through them bar by bar, and if you want, you can, um, uh, we can unmute you so you can ask questions directly in the session. Um, okay, thanks, you Eusebio. Next chart, please. <clears throat> so we've got the primer and the standard available. Um, and a bit about the courses, they're very detailed and quite precise. What we want to do is find the setup and then do the execution once it closes within one to four pips if we're using a five minute chart. So really precise, and these days with the super tight ranges, and if you're trading Asian pairs, then maybe even a half pip execution. So you can see why we want to be precise about things and uh, the level of detail that's involved. Uh, it's it's not like, oh, we wait until the moving averages cross and then you get in. So do you get in if it's going up or down or what? Uh, a lot of uh, training doesn't sort of involve that. So we tell you precisely what's happening. We do use some jargon, but we try and get rid of that right from the start. And if there's a word that you don't understand, then just please ask. We, we're not trying to obfuscate things, uh, cloud cloud things up like I just did. We we want you to understand things. We do have our own jargon because it makes it easy to explain things. But one, um, yep, uh, yeah, we try and supply a glossary. Uh, like I said, we train with the MetaTrader platform. Uh, it's reasonably simple. It's not the best, but it's it's adequate. And we provide all the course materials. So uh, any videos, PDFs, notes, uh, example charts, chat transcript templates, indicators, uh, whatever you need, we will be providing pretty much straight after the session is finished. Uh, next page, please, Eusebio. Uh, Raul has said, peers were essentially forex traders and I trade futures. Uh, absolutely, it can be used with futures and uh, oil indices, gold, uh, whatever, pretty much whatever you can chart, you can use with the max, so long as it's actually moving and not, not a flat line kind of thing. Uh, somebody asked if we could trade cryptocurrency. I haven't seen one of their charts. I presume you can, but I'd rather not say yes until I see what one of their charts looks like. Some charts are just awful because they jump all over the show and it's really difficult to trade and you wouldn't want to be trading them. But if the, the movements are reasonable, then you could use them with crypto. But uh, yeah, we'd have to see the chart. Okay, so back on the presentation. Uh, the, like I said, we have homework that we'd like you to do. This is where you, the ideas that we present you, to you become action. Uh, you, you get used to them, and it verifies that your understanding. So the homework is really important. Um, we really hammer on about that. 
I've spoken about the after course invitations, the forum, the practice sessions. Uh, we have a couple of other things. One is the news watch list, which is free. It's available from our website. And if you want, you can uh, subscribe to it. And when uh, Eusebio and I have finished the news watch, we'll send you an email. Oh, thanks, Eusebio, to say, uh, come and get it kind of thing. So we, uh, for trend traders, you want to make sure that you're not in the movement while a large news item is kicking in. And if the news item kicks in, <clears throat> it can, and there's a surprise, it can cause some volatility. So we want to make sure that you're aware of the news that's coming up. The important ones, uh, the ones from Forex Factory, uh, sometimes they list important things as being unimportant and unimportant things as being important. So uh, you simply go through and tries to clean that up. And uh, yeah, we have the, at the bottom of this uh, section, there is an explanation for what all the colors mean and what the, the columns are actually all about. Uh, but the main idea is you don't trade through them. You try and take your profits before the news comes out so that you don't get a surprise when they do actually come out. And we also supply a little table there which shows you the best moving pairs for the last four weeks. Um, generally, this is out of the 28 majors or main pairs. Uh, we try and get 14 of them out. Because the ranges have been so tight lately, they haven't moved above uh, uh, less than half of them have gone above the $750 daily range. So if anything's below $750 average daily range, uh, I don't actually supply that. So this shows uh, the best moving pairs to pick. Uh, just watch out for the spreads if you're trading smaller time frames, because uh, that can cost. Uh, those spreads are only approximate and they vary through the day depending on what broker you use and what kind of platform. So, uh, But for the past four weeks, these have been really good. It's likely that for the next week, they'll be very similar unless some surprise comes out on the, say, for the Euro or the Aussie or the US, and then maybe that one will become more dominant. But uh, this will give you a really good heads up. Uh, there's a, other, a lot of other pairs like the Aussie Swiss and the um, Aussie US dollar, which have got incredibly small ranges and it's just not worthwhile trading those because they're not moving much so you're spending all your time on something that's got a 30 pip range through the day uh, you're not going to make money from it you're going to make more money from something that's making uh, over 100 pips per day okay thanks you Sabio <clears throat> and uh, we also have one other thing uh, which is available to you uh, uh, not just after the course, but you can use it straight away. And uh, that's price levels. Eusebio produces price levels each week. We have a uh, two two subscription levels. Um, uh, okay, Eusebio, thank you. One is uh, a free session, uh, a, a free taste. We can subscribe to it and you get a couple of levels per week given to you. And I think Eusebio is trying to find them. Oh, okay. They're on higher time frames, so... Sometimes they don't appear on the M5 charts. So um, what we do is, or what Eusebio does is he uh, puts together the price levels for about 20 different pairs. Uh, it varies each week depending on how the markets have moved. Uh, puts them on a chart and creates a template for it and then sends them out to, the, to a group. Uh, we'll email them to you with a template. And all you need to do is uh, use a script and that those lines on the template will be transferred to your working charts without destroying your working charts, like changing the indicators or anything like that. Um, the For the free subscription, uh, you get a couple of pairs each week. But if you want, to, uh, and we also have a video on how to draw the levels as well, if you want to. Um, uh, it's, it's about 50 bucks if you want to take that, draw the levels for yourself and use the uh, free uh, two free pairs that come out each week as a check to make sure you're doing things correctly. That's one way to go. And if you don't want to do all the work, then Eusebio, like I said, produces uh, something like 20 or so pairs per week, the levels for them. Uh, you can subscribe to that as well per month. And that's around about 50 bucks a month as well. Um, so, but basically, if you just want to try two of them out, they're free and we'll be sending out the links if we're not put them already into the chat area. Uh, for you to subscribe to. So um, you're welcome to do that. Uh, Eusebio. 
what oh okay he's what Eusebio is doing is showing the uh, uh, the template uh, the emails and the templates that uh, he produces that you can put on your charts Yes, Chris, just to give a compliment information, there are not only pairs, but also to answer uh, one of the person who has asked a question, I also provide levels for some indices and other products, for example, the DAX, the NASDAQ, uh, the oil, the crude oil here, uh, the S&P 500, um, the gold, and uh, somewhere else also the, the Dow Jones, I don't, I don't see should be somewhere, uh, it is not in this sense, I have uh, forgotten to include it, but also the, the Dow Jones. So, uh, so yes, these levels are provided for Forex and other markets too. Okay, and the, the reason that we concentrate on the Forex is it's essentially 24 hours, so you've got plenty of time to do your homework. <laughs> uh, for those people who um, uh, cannot make it when the sessions themselves are on, th thanks you, Sabio. Um, then uh, th we send the videos out and you're able to do the course by video. Uh, so there's two ways, either you uh, attend the course uh, live in quotation marks and get the video and do your homework and send it in week after week. Um, you can also take the course uh, just straight by video, so at your own pace without having to worry about things and still send your homework in, still able to ask the questions. Um, there's really no difference. Uh, the live session does add a bit more immediacy, but uh, you'll still have to go through the video because there's so much information in those videos. Um, okay, and uh, uh, that's right, in the forum also there's uh, a lot of videos there as well that you can catch up on if you want. We've got um, years of stuff going back now. Right, so what the whole idea of this is all about is um, you want to achieve your goals like becoming debt-free or retirement, independence. In fact, speak about retirement, most of the people that take the course are over 50. So we're not here to mess around, we're not playing around, we're um, uh, old and desperate and want to want to make some money. Uh, there's, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so. What we want to supply you with is a solid trading method um, and you will get as much support as you ask. Uh, we don't know what you want, this is why we do the practice sessions so you can ask the questions. Uh, we know that trading is, is not easy and it's, it's, it is difficult, you're sitting there all on your own at night watching the screens thinking is this a setup for me or not and you get in and it works for you or it doesn't, you can just send the chart in to ask us, hey, is this, this right or not? Um, and the, the max now with ETF especially is with the scaling in methods, one of the most powerful trading methods that I've ever seen um, for trend trading. There are a lot of different ways out there um, and if you're into trend trading, then uh, this will give you a really good grounding in how, how it works and once you get it under your belt and are comfortable with it, you can really start pulling in the money to get to your goals. Um, for instance, just this, well, uh, every now and then people pop up in my email package saying, hey, I made 400 pips a day or I made 200 pips a day. Just the other day, um, well, one person sent in his charts uh, from the pound yen trading the Asian session where he made something like 300 pips on, on two pairs in a three or four hours on the Asian session, which I thought was pretty phenomenal, seeing as that one doesn't move that much. But he managed to catch the nice movements there. Uh, others have said that they've uh, doubled or quadrupled their account. This is back when things were moving uh, in about one month. So these kinds of things are possible. And uh, just this weekend, somebody said he made... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to think of the exact number, but it was over 300 times what he risked. So if he risked 3%, he would have tripled his account in a five-day swing trade using the max again. Um, I think it was closer to 400, but uh, in terms of R, which Eusebio talks about, he'd, he'd made over 400 R. So if he'd made risked 1%, he would have made 400% on his account. Um, so these these kinds of results are possible 
but you do have to do the work. It, it does require discipline and patience, and we do supply a lot of details. Okay, um, next slide, please, Eusebio. And cheers, Jono. Thanks. Uh, and I'm just checking. I use TradeStation. Uh, yes, we've got TradeStation uh, for the majority of the indicators. And uh, the only one we don't have is for the bias indicator that you say we were showing. We can supply you the source code for that so that you can ask somebody else to port it for you. So no problems about that role. OK. Um, and the actually, the indicators come from other members. They say, hey, I've ported this. Uh, for TradeStation or for NinjaTrader, uh, you can put it in the forum for other people to use. There's no charge or anything like that. OK, uh, so what we've got on offer, like we said right at the start, is the ETF standard, um, now with the max ETF. Uh, so you get a lot more entries and very tight stops with this. Uh, it starts actually on the 10th of November, not the 3rd there. That's a typo. Uh, it runs for seven weeks. Um, and there'll be an eighth session after Christmas as well. So it bumps right up against Christmas. And so plenty of time for homework over Christmas. Uh, it runs at 4 p.m. New York time each each week. The regular price for it is uh, just under $3,000. The webinar special for today is 2399 And Craig has said that there's payment plan, plans available if you want to uh, drip feed as well. Um, and he's put together... Craig has put together a package deal of the three courses, the primer, the light, which has got a couple of extra entries, and the standard with, with everything. You can jump straight into standard. You don't have to do primer or light first uh, if you want. Uh, if you're an absolute newbie, then take primer. Uh, it's still a, there's, there is a lot of work involved, like we want you to succeed, so we tell you a lot of detail. Um, but if you want, you can still take standard, and standard includes everything that Primer and Light have. And like I said, you get a lot more uh, immersed in this, in the, in the details of the course and how it actually works. So when you come out at the end of it after two months, you're in a um, much better position and easier position than if you'd taken the the Primer, where a lot of it relies on you and your own uh, uh, self confidence and discipline to carry things through. So that's that's the ETF standard. It's really, really worth it. Uh, almost two months worth of, um, of training, plus all the follow-ups. And uh, Craig will be putting the link into the charts, uh, into the chatsy, chat area shortly. Uh, next page, please, Eusebio. If you want to try us out, um, and the webinar special is 159, the course starts next week on the 14th. Um, and if you just wanted to take the primer and the light, which is uh, two weeks and then three weeks of courses, uh, another couple of months, it's 759. And the links for that will be going up as well. <clears throat> uh, if you have any questions that you want to ask at the moment, please do so. Uh, some other questions that have come up so far have been, and I'll ask you, Sabio, to jump in on this as well. Um, uh, do we recommend any brokers and what happens if I can't be present for the whole course? So um, perhaps if I answer those two, <laughs> um, Eusebio, uh, if you can't be present for the whole course, then we keep sending out the videos. And if you uh, aren't able, like for work or personal reasons, to send your homework in on time, then like Craig was saying, we're, we're, we're going to be here. Just keep sending in your homework as you get it done. Uh, let me see. There was one person in particular uh, I was having a bit of a joke with. Oh, he's left. Earl uh, came in on the course in 2014 and hasn't done a second session of homework. Sorry, Earl, for pointing you out like that, but uh, we're waiting for your your uh, one of your homeworks to come through. And uh, the other question is, what brokers do we recommend? We don't recommend brokers um, in the 10 years that we've been running now or so. Um, We've seen so many brokers come and go that, uh, and some of them we thought were okay, uh, have been caught. They've been caught with their fingers in the till or have done screwy things. We've got brokers that we use, um, and we're happy to tell Maxes who they are, but we don't still don't recommend them. It's just uh, too dangerous, uh, and it looks like the US has been cleaning up their act quite a bit as well by chopping out a lot of brokers. 
Okay, other questions. Will this work with yeah, gold yeah, indices? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Precisely, because I'm just uh, I'm just showing the, the the crude oil because it has been asked by I think it was Raoul uh, the, the the crude oil today with the crude oil it has been um, somewhat difficult a difficult day but if we observe for example yesterday during when the market is normally open for crude oil we get a nice movement and how the bias indicator has caught that movement really nicely and the previous day again and then a nice session and the bias indicator has caught the entire movement the previous day again not a so big movement but nicely indicated by our bias indicator and then a down movement here correctly identified with the bias indicator again here and so on and so on every day and, and this is true for crude oil it is true for uh, gold let me show gold uh, quickly <clears throat> so uh, futures uh, metals here gold do you have cryptocurrencies yet, Eusebio? Uh, I don't trade uh, right. cryptocurrency because I consider it a too speculative market. Yeah. And when the administrations in many countries will begin to regulate uh, that that type of currency, then we will see some dramatic drops in this market. Look here. Nice down movement, up movement, nicely caught by the bias indicator. So here again, look at the uh, up movement today. Uh, uh, not so fast, you say, your charts are a bit lagging. Ah. So if you can draw okay. lines or something more. Yep, thanks. And sometimes we have to make some uh, some adjustment. I think so we still have the same problem, Chris, uh, the, the change in the color we have made. Look here, the nice uptrend, nicely caught by the bias indicator again and so I don't have enough history sorry uh, on this uh, platform perhaps if I make a refresh I'm not sure I had only two days and then I have a big hole here between uh, uh, December last year and now uh, so today and anyway so oh yeah now now we have the, the days coming and so you can see no sorry I have I don't have enough data for the moment so you can see we, we can we can apply it for any uh, instrument for any market so okay and uh, sorry I was looking at your charts okay uh, other question is are there extra costs involved and how much time do I have to spend to learn this so I'll answer the extra costs uh, no there's no extra costs when you take a course that's it. Um, we don't charge extra for other indicators and things. We do have a, uh, a little trade manager if you want to take it up, but there's, the courses are complete in themselves. We do have some ancillary things, uh, but essentially uh, everything that's in the courses, uh, the courses are complete in themselves. Um, things like a trade manager or the price levels or extra um, training videos are available as options you don't have to take those okay uh, the course will still work without them and there was one there was one exception uh, quiz in terms of uh, extra cost so uh, let me just uh, explain um, it is um, convenient to be informed when we have potential opportunities and so uh, we have two choices uh, either we select a predefined number of charts every day possibly different chart every day depending on, on the context or to have a tool pinpointing us when we have potential opportunity by the way you see here gold on the daily time frame and so you have exactly the same uh, behavior of our bias indicator so in order to uh, define potential opportunity we have developed a tool it is not free this one involves a very small cost and let me take a pair for example uh, I can take any pair this is not the, the problem and we have defined an indicator which is called a dashboard and this dashboard indicator can be uh, defined on any pairs or instrument and any time frames and this for example here uh, it, I have defined the parameters to have all the potential situations given by the ETF lines, not the bias indicator, the ETF lines for the 28 pairs here and two time frames. 
five minutes, 15 minutes time frame. And we can have emails in real time, so we can have sound alert, pop-up windows, uh, an email which is sent to. And this indicator gives us the direction of the cross in the specific time frames and the number of bars when that cross has happened. For example, on the Aussie Swiss, on the 15 minute time frame, the two ETF lines have crossed two bars ago. We can check quickly on the chart if we have an opportunity. And the opportunity must be, of course, um, studied with the companion indicators, with the risk aspect and with the, the global uh, context aspect. And we can see that we have many, many opportunities every day. It depends of sort of the time frame. There are no preferred time frame. We can trade the five minute time frame, we can trade the daily time frame. And I was showing precisely here, for example, gold on the daily time frame. Look here. If you consider since last July, we have had that nice uptrend. Look how the trend bias was upward and then downward. And so very nice trade day after trade after trade. Okay? So we have some tool, this one, for example which can be used. This one involves a small cost, but this is one of the, the, the exceptions we have in terms of cost. Otherwise, everything is included in the price courses. <clears throat> yep, and like I said, it's an option. You, you don't need it. It is helpful. Yeah. Um, and the other question was, oh, how much time do I have to spend to learn this? And we, we can't answer that. Everybody is different. Some people come in, into this with uh, highly experienced traders, and after a couple of weeks or a couple of sessions, they've uh, they understand how to do the, the scaling in techniques and getting in and getting out, and they're off uh, uh, multiplying their money really quickly. Other people uh, have taken months, even years, to to get their heads around it. So it just depends on each person. Um, what one other thing is that uh, people. Th think uh, because I'm a CEO or I'm an engineer or I've been in a high-powered job where I've been really successful for the for my life up to this point that I'm going to breeze through this um, this is different it's it's like I'm a CEO and I know how to run a company uh, so I'm going to become a sculptor now and I'm going to be the, the Michelangelo of sculptors uh, it doesn't work that way it's a completely different way of um, having to think and operate. So you can still use some of your skills that you had in your business situations or previous situations, of course, but um, uh, don't expect it to be uh, a, a simple transition. It's it's not changing uh, a company. This is changing a, a complete way of doing things. Uh, okay. Do you want to add anything, Eusebio? Oh, yeah, it's a difficult aspect of discipline and, and patience, and in fact, and um, emphasized by the fact that when we train, and this, this makes the training difficult, in fact, is we are always in, um, evolving under uncertainties. We never know what will happen in the five-minute time frame, even in the next second, so, or in the next five minutes, or in the next day. We may have a good idea of what may possibly happen. But we are never sure of 100%. And so we need to feel comfortable to overcome the fears uh, of these uncertainties. And this is where having a good understanding of what the market is doing, why the market is moving, controlling the risk uh, we take on each trade and the discipline uh, may help to overcome all these fears we may have when we trade. In fact. Uncertainties is the real problem. Uh, in trading, in fact, and uh, we help. And that specific companion uh, bias indicator help to overcome that fear and to have a, a complete confidence in the movement we trade by the max now. Okay. Uh, it looks like we've run out of questions here so far. So uh, unless somebody pops up with another question, we're going to uh, end this, this presentation. Uh, I'll... Uh, Ah, <laughs> I was going to say I'll leave the, might pay to leave the uh, discount page up, Eusebio, but it doesn't have any links on it. So Chris, we'll leave it. Yeah, Craig. Uh, pardon me, I, I may have lost track here, but did we answer Gord's question about the lowest recommended time frame? Ah, no, we didn't. Okay, that let's, let's do that. He okay. wants to know ah. what, what is the lowest recommended time frame for trading? Uh, th th there is no best time frame uh, 
to, to trade. Every time frames is uh, good to trade. And in fact, each trader must consider uh, his or her trading activities inside all the activities of uh, the trader. Uh, Trading must be included in an harmonious way in your way of life. And so if you have time constraints, for example, because you have another job, for example, or you have other responsibilities, maybe you have to consider to trade with a higher time frame, maybe the four hour time frame, the eight hour time frame, the 12 hours time frame, or the daily time frame. If you consider to trade full time, then the five minute is perfect, the 15 minutes is, per is perfect, uh, even the 30 minutes is, is perfect. So there is no one best time frame. The only difference between one time frame and another will be the frequency of trade. It's clear that in a small time frame, you will have many more potential trades to consider than in the daily time frame. You say, Bio, I think he would like to know the, the shortest time frame that you might consider trading. Oh, uh, myself, I trade the five minute time frame. We have some uh, max graduates uh, who trade with the, the one minute time frame. Uh, you need to be extremely dif disciplined with the, with the one minute time. It's possible. Personally, uh, I don't recommend the one minute, but it's possible. So, uh, again, th there is no limit to trade with, uh, with the max. On other platforms, I know even traders using time frames con um, uh, time frame corresponding to a few seconds, 10 seconds, for example, and it works perfectly. Okay. So it, uh, it's, just a ma it's just a matter of how much effort and focus you can put on your trading process, in fact, and your availability. Thank you very much for your uh, patience and for the time you have spent with us today. We really appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Take care and see you on the other side.